down for now. And then let's start painting right here. And then maybe let's actually feather this here so that it goes from brighter and you can see the depth change a little bit here. So I'm going to widen my brush so I can just paint an overall smoothness here. Turn it up. Maybe add some more. Okay, so you got some gradients going there. Uh, the other thing I can see here is like the water. This water should actually have a gradient as well. Maybe add some more white here at the bottom. Okay. And we have our back clouds, our overall gradient, our back trees, our overall gradient, and our final black. And this is pretty a pretty simple depth map that we're creating. You can go in more detail, spend more time on it. I highly recommend actually feathering each uh, edge just so that when you start doing the displacement map in After Effects, you won't get that sharp um, cut from, from, from a gray to a lighter gray. You, you'll never really notice the, the transition. As long as it's smooth, even if this is even faded more, you, your eyes won't see the depth change and create a problem. It'll actually look pretty natural. So let's save this and switch over to After Effects. And we will import. Let's see, from the desktop, we have our 3D podcast footage. Bring it in as comped layers. Uh, let's make this on screen. Okay. So, bring it in as cropped layers. Okay, so here's our elements here from Photoshop. Let's pre comp the displacement map here. Oh, I also have just a general um, layer here to just show you what the final video might look like. This is the, the viewing area here. You can always change it. It's just a reference for myself. So let's turn this off. Let's um, turn these off. So this is our image here, the background image. These are all of our depth map pieces. Uh, looks like that didn't come in correct, but let's delete that. So let's make this, pre-comp this depth map together. So we'll call it displacement map. And now, this is where the fun begins. So let's duplicate the background, and let's call this left. And let's call the other one right. And we're going to comp the de this. We're going to comp this displacement map with one of them. So I'm just going to comp it with the right. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. So let's just call this side right. And I'm actually going to pre-comp the left as well. Sometimes you run into issues where the th the 3D cam um, sometimes you run into issues where the 3D plugin for the 3D glasses doesn't really line up correctly so I want to make sure that every comp is the exact same size. So let's move this into a new comp. Okay. Highlight one of your layers and then go to your effects, go to perspective 3D glasses. And we're going to choose left view with left, right view with right and then we are going to choose uh, the red and blue glasses just so you can see the that on the video it's, uh, you can s just so you can see on the video the actual image changes so let's go into our right comp here and now we're going to start placing the displacement map let's move the displacement map itself below and just turn it off you don't actually ever have to see it let's highlight the right image and we'll type in displacement so we want to click on the displacement map effect and we want to use the information from the displacement map that we brought in. We want to make this luminous and we also want to make this luminous. And let's just turn them both down to zero for now so that you can see what it looks like. This is what the original artwork looked like and if we start using uh, the horizontal this will start to give us the second perspective to help create that 3D effect. And if I slowly drag it, you'll be able to see almost like a camera move happen, where the image kind of starts to slide back and forth and gives you perspective change. And if you notice, there are some issues that you run into, but it, if we look closely at this tree here, it starts to smear. I mean, it doesn't go very far, but this little bit of change actually gives you great depth. Like if you go too far it just it starts to fall apart. 
if we just do a little bit of depth change, let's start back at zero. And if this is our right eye, whatever's closer should be moving to the left. So we should drag this mm, a little bit to the left there. Okay, the other good thing to do is to have your image bigger than what you want to present because you start to have issues where the image starts to crop off here when you start using the dif displacement map. So that was a good idea to have that um, that little mask of where I wanted to show the final image from. Um, and if you put on your 3D glasses, let's take a look. If you put on your 3D glasses, you can notice that this stuff here is in the foreground and this is in the background. Now we can push this even farther. So if we go, if we want more depth to it, we'll push the uh, horizontal to a little bit more. Let's go like that. And there's a little bit more depth. This looks closer and this looks farther away. The other thing you can do with 3D, um, with this 3D glasses here, is choose where you want your eye to be focused at. So by doing that, you can play with the convergence offset. And you can kind of slide this back and forth and the two images will line up where you want them to. So if I want, say, this to be the focus, I can line these up so that they're almost identical on top of each other and your eye automatically wants to go to that area. Um, but right now it looks pretty good. I, you can see here a little bit of the smearing of the image, but for, at a glance through the 3D glasses you don't even notice that. But you do notice that there is depth in this image. And you can you know, do these to a quick time. Um, as long as the quick time is a locked off camera, it's pretty good. Especially if, it's, if this was locked off and this was animated, the water was animated here. That'd be a really nice effect going on. If you have something where there's a lot of people walking by, that might not be the easiest thing to do because you'd have to start masking out the people. <clears throat> and you could do that. So you'd mask out a person, you might fill them with the, the level of gray from where they are standing on the, the, the grayscale map that you made. And you could fill them with a white or a darker gray, so that would push or pull the, the, the person's image back or forth, you know, closer or farther away. Um, and that's basically it. That's how you make, you know, use a displacement map to create a second image from a single image to give yourself a three-dimensional image. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, email me or comment on the YouTube page there. And that's it. Thank you very much. My name is Rob Powers.